Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, September 26th. Man, September's almost gone. It just, time is flying this year. Ah, such is life. It's a beautiful day here. Uh, cool, crisp, uh, 73 is gonna be the high. So looking forward to, to today, it's gonna be quite nice. Uh, and today, September 26th, is my wedding anniversary. So we're having a, <clears throat> having a really good weekend. We, I took off Friday night, and uh, thank you all for tolerating a, a night off from the live stream. But it was it was well worth it for me. We didn't do anything really special. We uh, we just kind of hung out together, watched uh, a couple of movies. Nothing that I'm really uh, well uh, actually one was was an old Peter Falk movie called The Chief Detective which I saw way back but uh, my wife hadn't seen it and that that was it was had some funny moments in it that was worth watching uh, the second one was something strange that she found on I believe on Prime Video and I can't remember the name of the movie it was something like The Lady in the Van um, it was the story about a it took place in London, and this woman who was ostensibly homeless, living in a van, parked in a man's driveway, and lived there for 15 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Wasn't a documentary, wasn't, um, it, it was an unusual movie, let's just leave it at that. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> ah, I, allergies, <laughs> fall allergy season is, uh, is always a challenge for me and it's apparently bad this year, so. So that was our Friday night, you know, nothing, nothing really special, but we enjoyed ourselves. It was nice to, cause, cause she's very tolerant of me and, you know, not that, not that doing live streams is a chore for me, but for her it's. You know, that's the night I don't do the dishes and, uh, you know, I'm rushing around at seven o'clock to get things together and all that. And she, she puts up with it. And it was just nice to spend a relaxing Friday. Uh, so we did that. Yesterday we went to the zoo as promised. We did not go to the Philadelphia Zoo, though. We wound up going to the Elmwood Zoo, which is a small local zoo. I I was worried about this. Uh, small zoos scare me, and I'll, I'll talk more about that. But this was beautiful. This was really, really a beautiful zoo, and I, I'm really glad we went. So I've had a problem with zoos since I was a, a young child. And, you know, the, the reason is obvious. you you got these beautiful, majestic animals that are meant to be roaming free and, and having a big old time and they're in a cage. And of course, uh, zoos have come along a lot since I was a child. Um, we went to the San Diego Zoo a few years ago and that is just absolutely amazing what, what they do there. Um, they do everything they can to make the habitat for those animals um, just, just perfect, you know. That, they're not in their native habitat for sure. Many of those animals were not born in their native habitat, so so there's that to consider. And but they they have all sorts of enrichment programs, and they have trainers working with the animals. And it, it, it's an amazing zoo. If you're ever in San Diego, you you must see the San Diego Zoo. But I grew up in Philadelphia, uh, right in the city, and uh, one of our summer vacation destinations was the Philadelphia Zoo. And I remember my dad taking me. So I had, uh, when I was five years old, my sister was born. So I was an only child until five. I've got a sister and a brother. So after the age of five, my dad would take me places. My mom would stay home with the kids. She preferred it that way. So it was, it was great. And I think my dad preferred it that way. So <laughs> my dad worked a lot and he, he would take off this week in the summertime. And that's what we did every day. We had a different place that we went to and it was, uh, you know, quality bonding time between me and my dad that uh, has, you know, I can still remember details of those days, even though I was only five, six years old. 
So I couldn't have been more than six, uh, and we went to the Philadelphia Zoo, and I think it was the first time I had been to the zoo. And Philadelphia Zoo is the oldest zoo in the country. Um, I do not remember when they were established, and I should have looked that up. I'll, I'll put it down below. But they were established uh, quite early on in the history of the country, and they are quite old. So when I was six years old, which would have been what, 19, 1972, 1971, 72, somewhere in that range, this modern ethical movement in zoos had not yet occurred. And even sort of general upkeep of zoos wasn't that great. And we went, and I can clearly remember this one exhibit. There was a wrought iron fence. Um, came up to about my chest, and I was six years old, so imagine how high this fence was. Circular, and it made a circle about ten feet across. What it was around was a hole. A pit uh, that went straight down probably about 40 feet and you'd look down into this thing and it was like you were looking down into a large uh, chimney stack or something it was just this straight brick uh, circular enclosure that went straight down 40 feet and at the bottom of it was a bear and I can, I can clearly remember looking over this thing at this bear, and the bear's just circling around and occasionally looking up and rearing up. And these children are ringed around this thing, throwing peanuts at the bear. I don't think bears eat peanuts. Or maybe they do. But they're bouncing off the bear, and the bear is roaring. And it was just... I felt bad for the bear. Even at six years old, I felt bad for this animal. And, you know, at six years old, your your experience with bears is cartoons and, you know, Winnie the Pooh, for goodness sakes. You'd... So it was, and I hate to say it was a formative experience because it sounds so trivial talking about it, but it was actually pretty important because every time I think of zoos, I think of that. You know, that's, the word zoo and that in my mind are forever linked. And it wasn't a good experience, and I'm sure it wasn't a good experience for the bear. Now, th uh, they had, I am nearly certain they had tunnels, and, you know, the bear did not live its whole life in that little circular enclosure. Uh, but that's where you got to see it. So, zoos have evolved a lot since then, and they're they're, you know, clearly not treating animals that way anymore. And it's a... It's a sad fact that they did at one point. And believe me, I'm no animal rights PETA person. I, animals are put on this earth by God for us to, to use. I have no problem eating them. I have no problem hunting them. Uh, but I do have a problem unnecessarily abusing them. And I think everyone should have that problem. So we're going to go to the Elmwood Zoo. And I'm thinking, okay, it's this little zoo out here in the suburbs it's going to be like cyclone fence and a deer inside of it and i've actually seen that at a uh quote petting zoo or kid zoo you know it's it's going to be horrible uh, but my wife really wanted to go and we went and i gotta tell you it really wasn't that bad but the first exhibit that i saw when i walked in was this large open exhibit it was um golden eagles and bald eagles and they're just sitting there and there's no you know they're, they're just sitting there in this open enclosure and I thought oh my goodness they they've clipped their wings you know and that bothered me because the thought of these you know I hate to sound corny but these majestic birds that are meant to you know soar in the air and and you know anytime you see a picture of an eagle flying it's just such a beautiful thing to see the idea that that would be taken away from them so that i can stand there and gawk at them was you know, appalling to me but i managed to find a helpful zoo employee and ask the question of you know what's going on there 
and it turns out that they're not their wings aren't clipped they actually are injured they were captured in the wild after injuries so they were actually saved because uh, almost certainly an eagle that can't fly is not going to live for very long and they were brought to the zoo to live there uh, to live out the rest of their lives uh, being fed and everything and, and you know being cared for so you know actually this is a very kind exhibit to, to the eagles and, and to the you know, the same was true for the golden eagles and the bald eagles so you know i felt a lot better about that and the benefit of this is i got some wonderful shots of the bald eagles so i will uh show you some of those this is uh, that some of these are not great because there was a lot of glare from the sun but this is taken from quite a distance away and i had to zoom in on the picture but you can see there's uh, actually three eagles sitting there uh just sunning on rocks and whatnot and then i was able to swing around to the other side of the enclosure and got some really nice pictures of this guy uh, he initially had his back to me but the more I stood there, he kind of sensed that I was, I was only about three feet away from him. And he kind of figured out that I was there and he eventually turned and gave me the evil eye. And I just continued to stand there and after taking this picture, just waiting uh, to see what else he would do. And I think he actually got a bit annoyed with me because he decided to really show off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, at that point I didn't want to, I didn't want to upset him. You know, I didn't want to scare him off because my wife was standing on the other side of a shrub that I'm standing. Uh, I'm standing actually between two shrubs to take this picture, probably breaking the rules. But she's on the other side of that, and she's also taking pictures of this guy. So I didn't want to scare him away. So at this point, I backed away, and that was the last uh, the last eagle picture I took. But I really like that picture because he's clearly. Not happy with myself encroaching upon his territory. So I didn't take any more pictures. My wife took took others. You know, it was typical zoo stuff. There were giraffes. We got to feed giraffes. Well, my wife fed giraffes. I took pictures. <laughs> um, you know, you give, you give them a leaf of romaine lettuce. That that was kind of fun. They had, um, th there were no elephants. There were no big cats. There were, uh, I don't know if medium cat is a thing, but they had like a, a jaguar, a cheetah, um, bobcat. Some unusual animals, like there was a, I think it's a red ring-tailed panda. I think that's it. Really beautiful, looks like a stuffed animal. Cute little thing. Uh, lizards, snakes, bats, uh, some, some, uh, I'll tell you a story. Uh, Pecari, Pecari, P E C C A R Y, large rodent. Um, for some reason, walking up to this enclosure, my wife said, Oh, it's the warthog. We hadn't seen any animals yet, but she was, somebody told her there were warthogs. So, anyway, uh, I don't know what a warthog looks like. And these Pecari, um, looked warthogish to be so she said warthog i walked up and said oh there's the warthog and there's two of them and they're they're these large unpleasant looking animals they sort of look like a cross between a pig and a porcupine and we're standing there and one of them just it's just the two of us it wasn't very crowded in this part of the zoo uh so it's just the two of us standing there. there's occasionally a person walking back and forth on the trail behind us and we're just watching them at a distance, and one turns and starts marching towards us. And you know, he was very determined. He's coming straight at us. I don't know why. Because um, you're not allowed to feed them or anything. You know, but he, he's just marching over to us. And my wife says, oh, look, he's coming to have his picture taken. You know, so she's taking pictures of the Picari, thinking it's a warthog. And I'm standing there, and because I'm a goof, um, as the... Thing gets very close I do a goofy voice and I, I say to my wife uh, pardon me do you have any compound W which I thought was one of the funniest things I've ever done she didn't get it and I bet that most of you won't get it but remember we thought it was a warthog anyway we finished with the Picari walked a little bit further found the sign that said it's a Picari uh, we're confused because we were told there were warthogs but we never found the warthogs um, yeah, it was fun. We got to see otters, and otters are always a blast. 
So anyway, Elmwood Zoo, I highly recommend it. Um, if you're in the Lehigh Valley area and you got nothing better to do than go see a zoo, check it out. And we had a nice day. So I appreciate you guys uh, tolerating me taking a night off so that I could spend some quality time with the missus and uh, do things like watch movies and take her to the zoo and all that. Not that I couldn't have taken her to the zoo. You know what I mean. So today is actually our anniversary. So I have to take advantage of the fact that she sleeps late and go and get some flowers and wrap her gifts, which I haven't done yet. While I'm getting flowers, I'll have to get some wrapping paper and an anniversary card. Why am I doing it today? Because that's what I do. <laughs> I wait till the last minute. <clears throat> so I got to do all that and uh, then go on with the day. We're going out to dinner tonight, made reservations at one of our favorite restaurants. Uh, and it's outdoor patio seating, so I hope it doesn't get too chilly. And that's going to be my day. So, folks, I hope your Sunday is uh, going really well and that you enjoy the rest of it. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. I will almost certainly be back on Wednesday, and definitely I'll be back this coming Friday with a live stream. So please don't forget to join me Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.